What's up guys, my name's Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss some fresh new iPhone 16 and 16 Pro leaks, including how the 16 Pro could be delayed, the two new AirPods models coming this year, Apple's next big thing, a crazy AirTag story, and more. And as always, if you wanna stay updated with everything going on in the world of Apple, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and check out the Apple Den newsletter. All right, so let's start by talking about the new iPhone 16 and 16 Pro leaks leaks and rumors that we got this week, and we got quite a few. So first off, taking a look at the new dummy units, courtesy of Sonny Dixon over on X, we can see that the 16 Pro and Pro Max are slightly larger than the 16 and 16 Plus. So now for the iPhone 16 Pro, we're expecting to see a 6.3 inch display, which is up from 6.1 inches on the 15 Pro. And then for the Pro Max, we might be seeing a 6.9 inch display compared to a 6.7 inch that we had on the 15 Pro Max. And then taking a look at the camera bump, you can see that on the regular iPhone 16 and 16 Plus, there is a vertical stacking camera system. And that likely is going to enable the standard 16 models to record spatial video for the Apple Vision Pro. And then here's something interesting. So the action button is on all four iPhone 16 models, not just the Pro and Pro Max. So Apple could be rolling out the action button to the regular 16 and the 16 Plus. And me personally, I rarely use my action button as it is, you know, on my 15 Pro Max. So maybe now that Apple is rolling this out to the base device as well. Maybe we're going to see some expanded capabilities with that action button. I can hope. And then the most mysterious button that's going to be on the iPhone 16 is the capture button. So you can see that this shows that capture button as well on the right side of the phone. It's in the same spot as the millimeter wave antenna. And this capture button is going to feature a mechanical design, but with a capacitive surface that supports gestures for zooming in and out. So again, the capture button is going to be for camera. We don't know specifically everything it's going to do, but it is going to be a way to control the camera. And you're going to be able to press on that button or like, you know, scroll your finger up and down to zoom in and out kind of like you can on the AirPods, you know, to lower and raise the volume with the new AirPods Pro too. So this could be pretty interesting. So the bezels are something that you can't really get a good idea of from the dummy units, but we did just get a report this week from the elect that says that these slim bezels on the 16 Pro and Pro Max are proving to be challenging in production. And this could potentially lead to a delay. It's unlikely at this point, but it is pretty interesting because they say this, the iPhone 16 series OLED applies border reduction structure or BRS technology, which makes the bottom bezel thin. To implement a thin bezel, the circuit under the bezel must be placed more tightly and some wiring must be bent down, which increases the technical difficulty. It is known that no company has stabilized the iPhone OLED production rate to the level that Apple expects. And they go on to say that for the iPhone 16 series, Samsung is expected to deliver all four OLEDs LG is also expected to aim for OLED supply in the top two lineups, such as the Pro and Pro Max, and BOE is expected to supply the OLED in the two lower lineups, such as the General 16 and the 16 Plus. So that has me wondering, you know, how thin are these bezels going to be on the 16 series, especially the 16 Pro series? So, you know, based on this production process, it makes me believe that we're going to be able to tell a noticeable difference in bezel size, which is always a great feature. We also just got an update on the iPhone 16 and 16 Pro colors along with the production process. So it looks like the iPhone 16 lineup is going to consist of space black, gray, white, and rose. And they say that the back glass will have the same color infused glass with the matte texture, just like the iPhone 15. And this comes just a week after hearing that the pros are going to come in a new space black and rose color. But what's coming sooner than the iPhones in September? New iPads, of course, because we're now expecting those in early May, but we have several new updates to talk about. So first off, according to DigiTimes, who cited sources at a Taiwanese supply chain, they said that mass production of camera lenses for the upcoming iPads has been repeatedly postponed. So it looks like these new iPads were never, you know, originally slated for May because we heard March, then we heard April, now we heard May. You know, that wasn't just a coincidence or, you know, uh, bad reporting by people who report 
reported that it looks like the camera lens was to blame of all things on an iPad the camera lens was to blame for the production delays and also you know we're getting close to a release when we see regulatory filings that show up in the database so it looks like four new model identifiers have been referenced in the filings indicating that we're going to see two sizes of the iPad Pro and the iPad Air so we've seen conflicting reports over the months about whether or not we're going to see two sizes for both models and now it looks like from the filings we should be seeing both an 11 inch and a 12.9 inch model for the iPad Pro and the iPad Air now I've heard from sources that I've personally talked to that Apple might actually market these as 13 inch instead of 12.9 inch they don't even know themselves so it'll be interesting to see what Apple does with the marketing for the sizing of the display so in addition to the iPhone 16s coming later this year we also got new details on the upcoming AirPods and this comes from Apple analyst Jeff Poo who says that Apple plans to release lower cost AirPods later this year and he also expects to see the AirPods Max 2 release in Q4 of this year so this lower cost pair of AirPods that he's mentioning could be the same ones that Mark Gurman mentioned a couple weeks ago when he said Apple's going to release two pairs of AirPods this year one's going to have active noise cancellation and the other is not and neither one of them are going to be the pros these are just regular AirPods and I said that I find that hard to believe because you know why would Apple put active noise cancellation in regular AirPods when they have the AirPods Pro but if Apple's gonna have like a lower cost like truly a lower cost set of AirPods then I can see that making sense but it will be very interesting to see the price point because when I hear lower cost I think under hundred dollars so if Apple can get AirPods out there for $99 these things are going to blow up even more and I could see sales going crazy for a $99 pair of AirPods but if you're not a fan of the AirPods or if you just don't want to wait for new headphones the new Beats headphones are allegedly coming sooner than later so according to 9to5Mac the Beats Solo 4 headphones are coming in early May these headphones are going to have spatial audio with dynamic head tracking USB-C for charging and high-res lossless audio along with that 9to5Mac says they're going to have a 50-hour battery life Bluetooth 5.3 improved call quality from beam forming mics and more and they're gonna have a $199 price tag and release on May 2nd and they go on to say that this is the first update to these headphones in over 2700 days which is crazy this is gonna be a huge upgrade if you had the previous gen okay so now we need to talk about Apple's next big thing so we talked a couple weeks ago about how Apple canceled their big Apple car project it cost them 10 billion dollars and then they canceled it after a decade and now Apple is ready to move on to the next big thing and that next big thing is apparently robots and this news comes from Bloomberg who reports that engineers at Apple have been exploring a mobile robot that can follow you around your home the original concept for the robot was a device that could navigate entirely on its own without human intervention and serve as a video conferencing tool one idea within Apple was having it be able to handle chores like cleaning dishes in a sink however this report says that this would require overcoming extraordinarily difficult engineering challenges so don't expect to see it anytime soon it also mentions that Apple has a secret facility near its Cupertino campus that it designed to look like the inside of a house and that's where the supposed testing for this robot is taking place all of this reminds me of the Astro home robot so if Apple can do something like the Astro home robot but actually make it like mop floors and sweep up and do things like that that I can see this being beneficial but otherwise I don't know I don't really see this happening however in that same report there's also mention of a new smart display which is something I can see coming within the next 10 years from Apple so it says that Apple has also developed an advanced tabletop home device that uses robotics to move a display around similar to Meta's defunct portal and Amazon's Echo Show this display could mimic head movements such as nodding while on a FaceTime call it could also be able to quote precisely lock on to a single person among a crowd during a video call and they say that the robotic smart display has apparently been added and removed from Apple's product roadmap 
over the years. So this report is very interesting and gives us a look into you know what Apple is preparing for the future. So I don't know, it's interesting. I, and I think that robotics is very foreign to Apple, obviously. But you know, in terms of privacy, I think Apple would be, you know, they would instantly have an edge in that market because of how much we already trust them for data and privacy, especially when you have a little robot going around your house, being able to see everything in your house and mapping out your house and hearing private conversations. I would trust Apple with that robot more than pretty much any other company out there to handle that sensitive information. Also this week, we got clarification as to how many employees Apple laid off by canceling the Apple car project. And it looks like it was over 600 employees. And this marks three rounds of layoffs for Apple this year. The other was the Siri annotation team in San Diego, impacting 121 people in January. So Apple has laid off over 700 people this year, which is very unlike Apple. Apple doesn't typically lay off this many people at a time, but that's been industry-wide for a while now. So it's also not too surprising. Also this week, Apple deemed a couple of new devices obsolete and vintage. So Apple added the iPhone 6 Plus to the obsolete section, and Apple considers a product obsolete seven years after it got taken off Apple shelves. And then as for what Apple is considering vintage now, they're considering the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus in product red specifically as vintage and also the iPad mini 4. Now Apple considers vintage five years after being taken off of shelves. So if you have one of those devices, be sure to sell it on eBay because now the value is going to go up because it's considered vintage or obsolete. I'm just kidding. It doesn't actually go up in value, but it makes it sound cooler when you have a vintage device. And then finally, let's talk about another crazy AirTag story. This time, it looks like criminals are using AirTags to steal cars as part of a big theft ring. And this specific story is about a man from Massachusetts who frequently travels through Vermont to visit family in Montreal but a few months ago, they said that a routine visit quickly turned into something he couldn't wrap his head around. He said, quote, when I was on my way back, my phone alerted me that there was a tracking device. By the time I realized it, I confirmed it with my phone that was able to make the AirTag beep. And according to police in that county, he's not the only one because they said just this month, they've had two reports from people who say GPS tracking devices were found on their cars after returning from Montreal. And according to a cyber analyst in the area, he said they could be identified identifying vehicles that could be stolen and shipped abroad as part of a car theft ring. He says these incidents have been going on for a while, but they're noticing a new spike recently where criminals in Montreal use the technology to track cars, steal them, and sell them. He also says that it's possible that cars are being tagged as part of an effort to move small amounts of drugs over the border. So basically, if you go to Montreal or across the border, and then you are going to come back in to the States, just beware that you could have an air tag on your you know, car somewhere hidden on your car and you could be a prime target for somebody to steal that car, which is pretty crazy. We heard about something similar, you know, a few months ago, but it looks like there's a new spike once again in this car theft ring and they're all using air tags to perform these acts of crime. So just be safe out there and always keep your phone around and always look for that alert that says an unknown air tag is nearby. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest in the world of Apple. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future Apple Weekly episodes. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.